Welcome to your day six yoga practice. Today you'll need to set up the short edge of your mat against a wall. So if you need to just press pause, go set yourself up and come on back and join me. We're gonna begin at the front of the, the mat in an easy forward fold. So just go ahead and tip forward from your hips. Separate your feet um, at least hip distance apart. Hook your fingers and the crooks of your elbows and just dangle your upper body. Connect to your breath and breathe in deeply through your nose. Relax your jaw, side out through an open mouth. So just beginning to really let go in this moment. And the theme today is the lymphatic system. So we'll be doing a detoxifying practice to help cleanse this part of your body. Let's take about three more deep breaths here, slowing down your breath, maybe swaying a little bit from side to side. Go ahead, taking one more nice deep breath, breathing in. And breathing out, you can let your hands release towards your mat. Exhale out completely. And on your next breath in, lift your chest, stretch out your spine, and look forward. You can adjust your feet, bringing them back in a little bit closer together. And as you breathe out, relax and fold. And let's do that again with your in-breath. Lift your chest halfway, look forward, opening your heart. Breathing out, releasing. Maybe even softening your knees. One more time, breathe in, stretch your spine, look forward. Breathe out, soften your back, release. And then from here, we're just gonna roll up through the spine. So let your knees bend a little bit, keep your chin to the chest until the very end, and then come to stand up nice and tall in Mountain Pose Tadasana. And just feel yourself standing upright. So you just allowed a lot of blood flow into the brain. So acclimating, reacclimating to standing tall. And then bring your hands to heart center. Find your breath. And with your next inhalation, reach your arms up and overhead. Breathing out, dive over your thighs, forward fold. Breathing in, halfway lift. Breathing out, taking your feet back, finding your plank pose, upward push-up position. And then take your time as you exhale to lower yourself all the way down. And you can come to your belly just starting with easy cobra. And you might stay here with your cobra pose or slipping the hands back, pressing the arms straight into up dog and all the way back to down dog. We're going to take a few um, of these sun salutations just to get the whole body warmed up, generating energy in the muscles, which helps to pump your lymphatic fluid from the periphery of your body back towards your heart. So from downward facing dog pose, take one more full breath in. And then as you breathe out, releasing and preparing, breathing in, walking, stepping, or hopping your feet forward to the front of your mat, lifting your chest, and exhale, release, folding forward. And we'll inhale, rise up, sweep the arms overhead, stretch out long as you gaze up, and exhaling, hands to the heart. Okay, so we'll do that two more times, breathing in, big sweep of the arms up and overhead. Breathing out, dive over your thighs, forward fold. Inhaling, halfway lift. Exhale, walk, step, or hop your feet back. Find your plank pose and lower yourself down through Chaturanga. Taking cobra or full up dog, breathing in. Downward facing dog, breathing out. And again, take one or two more deep breaths here. Just feeling the circulation in your body beginning to move. Right. Feeling that circulation increase its pace and rhythm a bit. On your next breath in, walk, step, or hop your feet to the front of your mat, lifting through the chest and folding with your exhale. Rising up, sweep the arms overhead, gaze up, stretch out, and exhale, hands to the heart. One more time, breathing in, big sweep of the arms up. Folding, exhale. Breathing in. Halfway lift, exhaling, taking the feet back, moving through your vinyasa, lowering down, chaturanga, up dog, breathing in, down dog, breathing out. 
Couple breaths in your down dog. Great, and then from downward facing dog pose, walk, step, or hop, bring your feet to the front of your mat, taking a full breath in, stretching out your spine. Hold deeply as you exhale, drawing the belly towards the thighs, nose towards the knees. Breathe in, lift and rise, sweep the arms up, overhead gaze towards the palms pressing, and hands releasing down alongside the body as you breathe out. Good, and then just stand comfortably here in mountain pose and make some loose fists with your hands and you're just gonna begin to tap all across your body, across the chest, the belly, down into the legs. And again, this um, helps to just wake up that lymphatic system in your body. It's an open-ended system, so the vessels need pressure, they need movement, or even an inversion to help them draw the waste um, from the periphery of your body, bringing it all the way back to your heart. So this is a nice little way to just wake things up, stimulate that flow. You can also brush your skin, rub your skin, and you might get a good yawn as you begin to really open up those vessels, get that flow happening through the body. Good. Do any last little movement, scrub, scratch, rub that feels good for you. Brush your skin off a little bit. Take a deep breath in and come back into your standing mountain pose. And from here, we're going to move into eagle. So with your breath in, sweep the arms up overhead and then weave your right arm underneath your left arm. See so if you can get your palms to press. Squeeze your inner arms together. And then as you exhale, sit back into chair pose and take your right leg over your left leg. So you could just prop up on your right toes here or tuck them behind your calf. And then we're gonna curl forward. So eagle pose really flushes out your um, lymph nodes in the armpits, across the chest, through the belly, especially when you fold forward like this, through the inner groins. So really squeeze your thighs together, your arms together, squeeze through the abdomen. Breathing here as you compress your body in. And then slowly unwind with your in-breath. Step out wide, reach your arms out, make a big X with your body. Right, just flushing those lymph nodes out now after you've compressed them. And then come back through center, Tadasana pose. And we'll take side two. So stretching the arms up and overhead, breathing in. Left arm sweeps underneath the right. Sit back into your chair pose with your hips. Crossing the right leg, the right thigh over the left. Again, you could just rest on your tiptoes so that you can really focus on the compression in this position. Draw forward, squeeze your arms, squeeze your thighs, squeeze your belly. Breathing here, nice and deeply. One more full breath in and out as you exhale, squeeze more. And then unwind, come back up through center, make a big X with your body. Full breath in. And as you breathe out, let yourself come back into Tadasana Mountain Pose. Flushing things out, getting things flowing. From here, take your hands to your hips and we're gonna step out to the left, taking a wide-legged position. Pigeon toe your feet. Hands again around the hips here. Lift your chest, gaze up, breathe in. And as you breathe out, tip forward from your hips and release your hands down to the floor. Take your head towards the floor. So for those of you that are pretty proficient in tripod headstand here and your head easily reaches the floor, go ahead and take tripod headstand. So beginning to work into your inversions today. And if that's way out of reach for you, what you can do instead is just work on bringing your fingers in line with your toes. Stacking your elbows over your wrists, squeezing the elbows together, and working the head in the direction of the floor. You might even bend your knees a little bit, or if you have a block handy, you could put a block underneath your head. No rush to get there. Even just hanging in this forward fold is giving you an inversion. And with inversions, we're just, again, helping the lymphatic system drain the waste from your body back towards your heart where it is purified. If you're in headstand, come on down. And take your last couple breaths here in your forward fold. Stretching through the back body. Breathe out completely. 
And with your next breath in, you can lift your chest looking forward. And then just walk your hands towards the right and come into a lunge on your mat. And step yourself back into downward facing dog. Great, and from down dog, you can choose to rest in child's pose if you need a break. You can hold here in down dog or work towards a deeper inversion, half handstand. So you might have to walk your hands back, walk your body back until your heels touch the wall. And then you're gonna work on walking your feet up the wall until your legs are parallel to the floor. Draw the belly into the body. And if you want more, if you're in the half handstand, try lifting one leg at a time, completely inverting one side of the body and then the other. See if you can hold for about five deep breaths. This not only is obviously very strengthening for the shoulders and the arms, but again, we're getting the body upside down, which really helps to shift stagnant energy in your system. When you've had enough of that, come on down, rest into child's pose, taking a couple breaths. And then your choice here to continue resting or to repeat your down dog, your half handstand, or those of you, of you, again, that are comfortable and proficient with full handstand, you can rise up and flip yourself around so that now your fingers are pointing towards the wall and you can kick yourself up into your full handstand. So just try this only if you are comfortable doing handstand. You've done it before, maybe in a classroom setting. Fingers spread wide, kick yourself up. And again, let's try to hold for five breaths. Five deep breaths, stimulating circulation in the body, turning your world upside down. So great to get a new perspective this way. Deep breathing, take one or two more breaths, and then it will all meet in child's pose. So you can just drop your knees to your mat and relax. A couple breaths here. So after you turn yourself upside down, it's always good to rest in child's pose and just let the blood flow back down into the lower body. Good. Take one more full breath in child's pose, breathing in and breathing out. And then from child's pose, you can rise up. And just flip yourself around, have a seat on your mat for a moment and circle out your wrist. So that's a lot of uh, weight bearing through the hands and the wrist. So it's good to circle them out a few times, shake them out, whatever feels good to you. And then we're gonna move into another inversion. So we're gonna take our legs up the wall. Um, so you'll just slip the legs up the wall. Try to get the back of your legs as close to the wall as possible and let your spine rest down onto your mat. And there's going to be some options here. So your first option is to just rest in this position. Nice restorative inversion. This is a great pose to do when you've got uh, a limited amount of time, but you want to do a nice uh, relaxing yoga pose, do this one. So great for the body and for the mind. But if you want a little bit more, you can bend your knees and press your feet into the wall. And then you're gonna lift your hips, roll them up as high as you can get them, and then you can walk your feet up the wall until your legs are straight and just press into the heels, draw your toes back towards your face. And you can walk your elbows in and try to get your hands to your low back. So a little bit more of an inversion now. Working the heart above the head. And you can stay here, right? Or those of you that have done full shoulder stand before and are comfortable Moving into that, you can draw one leg away from the wall and then the other leg away from the wall. And then you'll be hanging out just on your shoulders in Saravangasana, full shoulder stand. Breathing here, slowing down the breath if possible, pressing through the shoulders, the elbows, and the back of your head. And then if you are in your full shoulder stand and you want to work into plow, take your feet behind your head. 
And you might need to just keep your hands on your low back here, or you can see if you have space to interlace your fingers and stretch your arms out long. So if your feet don't reach the floor in plow pose, it's a good idea to either skip it, just to honor your back and the back of your legs, or bend your knees deeply and keep your hands on your low back. Your knees could even rest right over your, your forehead. Holding in your plow for just two or three more breaths. And then when you are ready, taking your hands to your back again, if they're not there already, and letting the legs lift back up towards the sky. So coming back through your shoulder stand, and then just one leg at a time, reach the foot towards the wall and bring both feet to the wall until you can easily release and roll your spine down. And then you can just rest here with legs up the wall uh, for a few more breaths. Feeling the effects from all of this uh, inversion work. Right? Notice how it makes you feel. Certain inversions are going to stimulate, stimulate you while others will calm you down but they all can freshen your perspective right, by turning your world upside down. Three or four more breaths here. And then from legs up the wall, we're going to shift off to one side so you can just bend your knees, roll off to a side. You might want to rest there in fetal position for a moment. Taking a couple deep breaths. Also take a cleansing breath here where you breathe in through the nose nice and deeply and then just sigh out through the mouth. And then when you're ready, rise up and come around onto your mat, onto your hands and knees. Rest into child's pose. And we're going to be finishing up our practice with pigeon today. Work into those hips a little bit more. Uh, so coming up into downward facing dog when you're ready. And from down dog to prepare for the right side, we'll do the right leg first. You can lift your right leg up towards the sky and really stretch open the hip. If you're close to the wall, just be mindful that it's behind you there. And then drawing that right knee to the head of your mat, you can slip it to the inside of your right thumb. And set yourself up for your pigeon pose. Take a couple breaths in tall pigeon, propping up on the tips of your fingers, lifting your chest, and letting your hips sink. Full breath here, breathing in, gazing up. And then with your breath out, walking your hands forward and releasing. Let's hold for about five to six deep breaths in pigeon. Letting the breath travel all the way down into your hips and when you exhale, just soften and release. And on your next breath in, let's shift to side two. So walk your hands back, shift into your downward facing dog. If you'd like from here, you can move through another vinyasa coming into plank, lowering through chaturanga, moving into up dog and all the way back through down dog. And then side two, lifting the left leg way up high, open up the front of that left hip and thigh and then draw the knee to the front of your mat, placing the knee close to your left thumb. And then again, sit tall in pigeon, taking one or two breaths, lifting the chest and gazing up as you let your hips drop down heavy, and then walking your hands out and settling into your pigeon. Five or six deep breaths here. Let your hips settle and release.
Deep breathing in through the nose. You can take a cleansing breath out through the mouth. Take one more full breath here, breathing in and breathing out. Then ease yourself up, walk your hands back, and again you can tuck your back toes, lift yourself through downward facing dog pose. And from down dog you could drop your knees and just hang out in child. Or again from down dog, choosing to move through a vinyasa by coming into plank pose, upward push up, lowering chaturanga, breathing into up dog, breathing out through your downward facing dog. Great, and then come into child's pose on your mat. I lied, we're gonna do one uh, or two more poses to complete our practice today. So we're gonna work with something called rabbit pose or hair pose. You can just slide your hands back so they're resting out in front of your knees and then roll up onto the top of your head. So this is rabbit pose. Line up your hands right underneath your elbows. You should be able to see the tips of your fingers and hug your elbows in. And then from here you can tuck your toes and lift your hips only if you don't have any neck or shoulder issues. See how that feels. Release your knees and then roll back into your child's pose. So that's rabbit pose, right? So that's one of your headstand options. We're working through headstand right now. So from um, there, we're gonna move into what's called dolphin. So lining up the elbows underneath your shoulders, clasp your fingers, press down through the hands and then lift your hips, just like down dog, but now you're on your elbows and your heels can be resting close to the wall and if you're feeling strong in dolphin walk your feet up the wall just like we did earlier with the half handstand and hang out here same thing with this you could add on by lifting one leg at a time to make it more intense come on down out of your dolphin when you're ready and then those of you that have a headstand practice and you're really proficient and strong in your headstand go ahead and take full headstand. And if headstand is not something that you know how to do, if you're not comfortable doing it on your own or with the wall, you're gonna repeat either rabbit pose, so you're just on your knees, rolling onto the top of your head, or dolphin pose. Five deep breaths. I take one or two more full breaths with whatever option you are working on right now. The idea is just to have the head below the level of the heart. Inversion for the heart and for the brain. And then we're gonna meet in child's pose. So just resting the hips back. Maybe if you took a lot of weight into the head, you wanna rock your head from side to side to release the compression from your neck. And now we are going to move into our very last little stretch. We're going to rise up and come around onto our backs where we will finish up with a, a short little recline twist and then we'll be moving into our final relaxation shavasana. So rise on up, flip it, flip it over, come down onto your backs, hug your knees into your chest, give yourself a nice little squeeze. And then you can let your arms come out in line with your shoulders and take your feet to the floor, mat width apart. And drop your knees over to the right. Breathing nice and deeply, starting to feel how your body is softening, releasing all effort. Take your knees over to the left. Deep breath into the belly. Breathe out, relax your hips, relax your low back. And then bring your knees back through center, hug them in towards your chest. Give yourself one last little squeeze here. And then we'll be moving into our Shavasana final relaxation. So let your body stretch out nice and long. Take a couple deep breaths and when you exhale, side out through the mouth and really feel your whole body breathing out your whole body releasing and relaxing with your exhale 
This is a great practice to do if possible early in the day. Turning yourself upside down as much as we did invigorates your system. It's all your organs functioning um, in a really vital way. Clears out stagnant energy. Clears your mind. Quiets your mind. And helps your lymphatic system flow properly so that the waste within your body can easily flow back towards your heart where it is purified. Just resting for the next couple minutes in silence. And if you'd like to continue resting in Shavasana, if you've got plenty of time, feel free to do that. Or just start to stretch your body out and deepen your breath. When you feel ready, you can ease off to one side, resting in fetal position, taking another full breath in and out. And then eventually bringing yourself up into a comfortable seat. Closing your eyes, sitting and just feeling inside yourself, noticing how the practice has impacted you today. Right from this aligned place, may you move out into the rest of your day with a fresh perspective on things. Namaste. Namaste.